You know, the concept for the Twilight Zone had been rolling around Rod Serling's mind for a number of years, but didn't really uh, get fruition until a certain script he put together called The Time Element eventually became what was called the pilot for the Twilight Zone. Now, the Time Element was a teleplay that premiered on November 24, 1958. This was Rod Serling's first published science fiction story. It's a tale that deals with time travel and the concept of illusion versus reality. This teleplay also gave audiences a first glimpse of what was to become Serling's signature writing style, a plot twist. However, when CBS, who later uh, you know, broadcast Twilight Zone, first looked at the script, they thought little of it and the script was shelved. But when Burt Granite, producer of the Westinghouse Desiree Playhouse, needed a script, he looked through CBS's vaults and found the time element. Desi Arnaz introduced the episode, and it starred William Bendix, Martin Balson, Daryl Hickman, and Carol Kearney. Now, the story is a time travel fantasy of sorts involving a man named Peter Jensen, played by Bendix, visiting a psychoanalyst, played by Martin Balsam, with complaints of a recurring dream in which he imagines waking up in Honolulu just prior to the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. I wake up in a hotel room in Honolulu and it's 1941, but I mean I really wake up and it's really 1941, he explains, concluding that these are not more mere dreams. He actually is traveling through time. However, Dr. Gosby insists that time travel is impossible, given the nature of temporal paradoxes. During his dream, taking advantage of the situation, he bets on all the winning horses, all the right teams, and eventually tries unsuccessfully to warn others, the newspaper, the military, anyone, that the Japanese are planning a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. His warnings are seen as crazed ravings and either ignored or met with physical violence, as he is punched out by an engineer who works on a USS Arizona after insisting that it will be sunk on December 7th. Jensen's dream always ends as the Japanese bombers fly overhead on the morning of December 7th, prompting him to yell out, I told you, why wouldn't anybody listen to me? Jensen finally discloses to Dr. Gillespie that he's actually in Honolulu on December 7th, 1941. While on the couch, he falls asleep once again, only this time, Japanese planes flying overhead shoot inside the windows of his room, and he is killed. When the camera cuts back to the doctor's office, the couch Jensen was lying on is now empty, and Dr. Gillespie looks around confused. Although Jensen had smoked earlier, the ashtray is empty. He looks in his appointment book and finds he had no appointments scheduled for that day. Gillespie eventually goes to a bar and finds Jensen's picture on the wall. The bartender said that Jensen tended bar here, but was killed in Pearl Harbor. Now, after the episode was en ended, uh, Desi Arnaz made all kind of appeal to the audience, tell, tell us what you really think, kind of, you know, poo-pooing the, the plot of the, the, the show, and many critics said, you know, maybe Desi should have kept his mouth shut. Now, with this script, Serling again drafted the fundamental elements that would distinguish the series still to come. A science fiction fantasy theme, opening closing narration, and an ending with a twist. But what would be proved popular with audiences and critics in 59 did not meet network standards in 57. Now, the time element was purchased only to be shelved indefinitely, and talks of making the Twilight Zone a television series had pretty well ended. Now, this is where the things stood when uh, Burt Granite, the new producer for Westinghouse Desilu Playhouse, discovered the time element in CBS's vaults while searching for an original Serling script to add prestige to the show. Now, the time element, again, introduced by Desi, uh, debuted on November 24th, uh, 58, to an overwhelmingly delighted audience of television viewers and critics alike. The humor and sincerity of Mr. Serling's dialogue made the tele time element consistently entertaining, offered Jack Gould of the New York Times. Now, over 6,000 letters of praise flooded Granite's offices. Convinced that a series based on such stories could succeed, CBS again be began talks with Serling about the possibilities of producing The Twilight Zone. Where is Everybody? with Earl Holliman was accepted as the pilot episode, the second pilot, and the project was officially announced to the public in early 59. The time element is rarely aired on television. It was only available until it was shown as part of an all-night sneak preview of the new cable uh, channel TV Land. Now, I saw the time element, saw what the Desi had to say. I think, basically, it it's sort of like kind of a combination of, you know, uh, a British thriller, but uh, William Deb Bendix is not the strongest actor to have in the role, but Martin Balsam, who uh, was a big part of Twilight Zone's hour-long uh, uh, season, uh, gives a good performance as the Doctor. But it's like this. When is, when is your reality and your dreams become reality, or your dreams 
our reality and you're just reliving a reality and that's what that's the plot is but with the way desi said it at the end oh well you know uh do you think he was really there and you know he kind of poo-pooed a little bit he was almost giving his own interpretation of the movie before the the critics did i, I give the the episode uh, three stars out of four it was quite interesting still is and you can probably get it i think it's on a, one of the twilight zone blu-rays if somebody could uh, comment on that but to me it really really works because if you look at the case of where's everybody and some of the other episodes of the twilight zone some of the aspects of the time element especially in some of the plots of the uh, first and second season especially the howard duff uh, episode where you know he's living in somebody else's reality it's like a tv show and he's just uh, playing the character and uh, you know the, the dennis weaver episode where basically he's reliving a dream all the time that he's being executed and anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's our latest in our Twilight Zone podcast. If you like what we're doing here, give us a like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget, Twilight Zone, always a good, good way to spend a late night waiting for the storm to come. Thanks for listening. Bye.